Hey there again guys, and what I want to talk to you about today is arrays and hash tables because I think that it causes quite a lot of confusion in PowerShell as to what each thing kind of means and, and how you work with them. Now, I don't want to go too far with this because I, I, I think we can come back to this and work with arrays and hash tables a bit more in a future video. But um, I just wanted to kind of talk about the basic concepts a little bit here and, and, and how you might start to work with these because it can get a little bit confusing for something that is a reasonably kind of basic uh, sort of use in PowerShell. So to start with, I, want to, I just want to talk about arrays. And an array is, is basically any kind of list of items or objects that are going to be stored in one bucket one object, an array, you know, and I'm sure most of you people watching have, have worked with arrays before. So if I take this very basic array with some recognizable football teams, hopefully, let me just run this through, okay? So what I've done is I have basically taken this list of football clubs and put them into a bucket, an object. And this is actually a variable that I can now call. So I now have that list. So this starts to become extremely important when you're a bit sort of further down the road with working with PowerShell in terms of manipulating data and creating perhaps reports or even doing some sort of automation to loop through and work with all of the child items within this, this bucket. Um, now this becomes very important when we're talking about things like for each loops and, and we will come to that at a later point. Um, but I just want to make sure that people are comfortable with this. It, just to kind of throw a few little things in there and, and again this is another concept I need to come back into but if I press dot at the end of the variable you can see that I actually start to get offered the uh, opportunity to uh, sorry let me move this screen I get the opportunity to see some properties I can work with on here. So, for example, count, the first one that appears. I'll just move my screen so you can see that a little bit better. So, this is very interesting. It, it gives me the number of items that sit within the bucket of the array. So, obviously, uh, that can, in itself, can be very useful. And, and uh, I can already think of some examples like uh, working with servers, if you in an enterprise environment, if you need to uh, count how many servers or Active Directory accounts, you know, uh, files have been returned, um, then that can sometimes be very helpful for certain sorts of automation. Another thing that is very important, and it's something that I wish I knew about further further back when I was first getting into PowerShell, is get type. Now, I find get type is extremely helpful because sometimes when you've got multiple variables in a PowerShell script, you can really lose your way with um, what the variable actually is. Sometimes things just don't quite work because the object is not the data type you thought. And I will talk about data types in another video. Um, so what is very helpful here is to confirm I have an array here. So if it's not behaving in a certain way that I thought, it might be because I've accidentally created an array, not an integer or not a uh, string. And we'll come back and discuss data types at another point. Now, let's just compare this. Uh, in fact, actually, let me just show you one more thing. Um, one other very cool thing you can do is with a variable that is an array is you can actually put a square bracket and then a number, for example, zero and then right square bracket. And I will get the uh, number, uh, whichever uh, item within the bucket uh, is uh, pertains to that particular number will appear. So for example, Juventus is the first item in the array. And so if I put zero, it will return the first item. If I put, you know, if I want to see Bayern Munich, then if I put two, which represents the third item in the list, and again, Let's clean this screen up for you guys a little bit. If I put two, we should see Bayern Munich get returned. And again, if I just show the array again, that is because Juventus is zero, Sporting Lisbon is one, Bayern Munich is two, etc., etc. 
okay and again we can kind of we'll talk about variables in another video uh, i could also put one dash two uh in fact i need to put one dot dot two and i get items one and two if i wanted to you know if i really wanted to i could put zero dot dot four and i basically get the whole array kind of pointless but you get the idea now, compare this to a hash table, and you can see here that this is a little bit different because what we now have are something that are called named pairs. Now, what I've got here is, again, going with a bit of a football theme, um, we have got football, uh, a footballer name and then linking it to the footballer's shirt number. So by doing this, what I, what I now can have is a very nice little table. If I run this and put my variable in here, I get this key value pair. So I have the name of an object. In this case, my object is Thomas Mueller, a footballer, and a value. And that is his shirt number of 13. And again, very similar situation. If I put a zero at the end of my variable, I'll get the first item back. In fact, no, I won't. Unfortunately, if you want to work with a hash table in terms of bringing uh, results back, then you do need to do something a little bit more complicated, which is to start working with PS objects, PowerShell objects, and, and customized properties and tables. So it does get a little bit more uh, advanced, and we will come back to that at a later point. Uh, one thing you do see that's different, though, is I now have as a property, I can put either keys, which are my footballer names, or indeed the values. So there is quite a bit more data to work with, but this needs its own complete video. So I will come back to that subject. Now, one thing I will do is just return to the array example one more time, because another thing that you can do with arrays is actually um, add objects to them. So what I can do is put an additional football team in there. So let's choose a league that I haven't got. So we've got Italy, Portugal, Germany, Spain, and, and England. So if I choose, uh, let's say, the Dutch Ida Divise, then I'll put Ix. OK, now if I run my variable, you can now see that I have a sixth club added to the list. I now have Ix included in that list. And of course, if I put five representing the sixth item in that array, I'll get a return of Ix. Very simple. So just to finish up with one more thing, let me just show you um, one more thing from the hash table side of things, because I feel like we did one more thing for arrays. So let's do one more thing for hash tables. Um, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about deleting and removing duplicates for arrays and hash tables in my next video. But uh, let me just finish up by showing this. So if again, if I just run my hash table variable. OK, now. One thing I can do that's pretty useful here 